Moving closer to home now, and the stakes are high in the US 2022 midterm elections. And the Democrats have now taken a defensive stance. The US President Joe Biden has been spending the bulk of his time recently campaigning to try and hang on to the seats that his party already holds. The Democrats are trying to woo solidly blue California, Illinois and New Mexico, as well as battleground state Pennsylvania, where Biden has deep roots. Biden's three-day tour began in Albuquerque, New Mexico's largest city, where he spoke about his student debt relief program by calling it a game changer. Five days, five days to go, and until the most important elections in our lifetime. And I, that's not hyperbole. It's going to shape what the next two, two generations look like. Next, Biden campaigned for the incumbent New Mexico governor, Michelle Yujan Krisham. The U.S. president explained to voters why electing her was crucial. New Mexico's contests echo political battles nationwide. There are concerns that Biden's low job approval rating, which is in the low 40s, could be a drag on Democratic candidates. The 79-year-old is fighting to help his party hold off a strong challenge mounted by Republicans for control of the U.S. Congress. Polls show Republicans are widely now expected to take control of the U.S. House of Representatives and the Senate as well, as voters worry about the state of the U.S. economy and inflation. Opposition parties historically fare better in midterm elections, providing a balance for new presidents in the second half of their terms. For more on this, we can join our correspondent Susan Tarani. She's live in New York City for us. Susan, a final push here from pre President Biden. Uh, what stood out to you from these campaign stops over the last day or so? Yeah, President Biden is in a tough spot considering the fact that many of the candidates who are campaigning have preferred to keep him at arm's length. So the president has tried to really campaign and go to states that he had won in 2020. The issue with that is generally among the Democratic Party, voter enthusiasm is very low. And the problem the President Biden has right now is that the message that he's sending out is very divisive. Uh, it's not one that the American people really have an appetite to hear on the one hand, and on the other hand, he's focusing on issues that aren't tangible to the American people. Kitchen table issues like inflation, the economy, and, and crime, uh, which is very uh, prominent. So, uh, you know, a recent poll said that only 17 won 7 a uh, percent of Americans think that the country is on the right track. I think what stood out for me the most is really why in these final days and this final push, the president has decided to really hammer in on this divisive message instead of trying to bring the country together and at least focus on some of the party's accomplishments instead of attacking the other party and saying that if you do vote, um, and go and vote for the other party, then, you know, democracy would be at stake. It would be undemocratic. Uh, I think this is just a very, very um, uh, risky message to send right now uh, to voters, even within his own party. And Susan, I guess over the last few weeks, we've seen the Democrats increasingly go on the defensive. Really, that optimism that they had a few months ago that they would hold on to both the House and the Senate, that seems to be waning now. Is that very much the anticipated position that the Republicans will be able to take uh, both the House and the Senate next week? Yeah, I mean, that's what we're hearing right now, but then you have to take into consideration the role of undecided voters and polling can always be very tricky. But I will say this year, the polls will be even trickier, uh, considering the fact that, you know, when you demonize one segment of the population to this extent, notably on the uh, length waves on the media and say that quote unquote MAGA Republicans are the enemy of the people and whatnot, you know, democracy is at stake, then a lot of the people that maybe identify themselves as Republicans um, and don't have trust in institutions and even the media, when they pick up the phone and answer to these polling questions, uh, either they hang up the phone or they're not being genuine 
in saying who they would vote for. So I think either we're going to um, see an extremely red tsunami that we didn't expect because a lot of closet Republicans went out and voted without answering to the polls, or we're uh, really going to see some kind of voter enthusiasm, maybe miraculously, on the part of the Democrats, uh, where they're going to really vote because they just don't want to see the other party succeed. But I think it's really going to be the former. I think it, this is a referendum on the president and people are really fed up. Susan, thank you. Susan Tarani joining us live from New York City.